today a very, very special day for us in the Catholic Church, celebrating the great feast of the Pentecost. A reminder for us on that occasion when Christ, when God breathed on his apostles, on the disciples, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Keeping ourselves to the readings of today, we can pick up some very good insights for our personal lives and for the life of the church itself. The first thing that we observe at the time of the Pentecost, the disciples were sitting quietly afraid, wondering what to do next, how things are going to unfold for themselves. And at this time, Jesus appearing to them and breathing on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. The first thing that we observe as recorded for us in the Acts of the Apostles, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And having been filled with the Spirit, they began to proclaim the mighty works of God. They began to proclaim the mighty works of God. And people who were listening to them, who heard these sounds, began to understand what these people were speaking in their own personal languages. At least 12 to 15 languages are recorded for us here in the Acts of the Apostles. Surely, Peter may have known only Hebrew and Aramaic. Surely the other disciples, apostles, would have known only maybe two languages at the most. How is it that others were able to hear in their own languages? But more important than that, when the Spirit was breathed into them, they began to proclaim the mighty works of God. And that is one of the key tests for every one of us who claims to, be, to have received the gift of the Spirit in our life. Our tongues get loosened. Our hearts get strengthened. Our minds become firm. And we can only proclaim one thing, the mighty works of God. What happened to Mother Mary? She sang the Magnificat. I praise the Lord for the great things the Lord has done for us. The mighty works of God. The second thing that we observe is given to us in the book of the Corinthians. <coughs> no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. And this is something to be seen, to be understood. I have come across people who cannot say Jesus is Lord even though they are baptized Christians. They find it so difficult to announce, to proclaim that Jesus is Lord because this is not mere speaking of words. It's not merely saying something. Rather, it is 
something that you believe in, something that you have experienced deep down within yourself, something that you know in your conviction that Jesus is really the Lord of my life. We all have personal experiences of when we say things we are not convinced about. Words hardly come out. And if they come out, they come out in stuttering ways. But when we are deeply convinced of something, our words are firm, our words are strong, our words are clear. And therefore, another test for us to know whether we are living in the Spirit. Am I able to say for myself firmly and clearly that Jesus is Lord? That Jesus is the Lord of my life? A third thing that we come across in the writings of Paul. The Spirit of God is given to us along with gifts, variety of gifts, so that the body of Christ may be served. And the gifts are given to us in another place. Some are called to be apostles, some are called to be teachers, some are called to be evangelists, some are called to be helpers, a variety of gifts. God distributes his gifts to each one of us according to his will and pleasure. <clears throat> Is it necessary that I should have all the gifts? No. Whatever gift the Lord has given me is meant for the common good. I should make that gift available for serving the body of Christ for serving the members of Christ. The gift is not for myself. The gift is not for my personal glorification. The gift is not for me to earn my living. The gift that is given to me in the spirit is the gift for enabling, empowering, motivating the people of God the body, the members of the body of Christ. And therefore, I need to identify the gift that God has given me. And having identified this gift, I must make it available to serve the body of Christ. It is a sad reality that so many of us have been given gifts by the Spirit. But like an unwrapped birthday gift, we prefer to keep it in the cupboard without using it for the service of God's kingdom, for the service of God's people. What will I tell my Lord on Judgment Day? Here was the gift that you gave me. I put it in a handkerchief and I buried it in the ground. You gave me one talent, here is your one talent back. Brothers and sisters, on a feast like this, we should ask ourselves one simple question. What am I doing with the gifts that the Lord has given me? Am I using it for the service of his people? Am I using it for the service of his kingdom? Am I using it as a service to build the body of Christ? Or the next thing that we have here is variety of services. There is variety of gifts, 
and there is variety of services. There are so many services that we need to do to help each other, to support each other, to encourage each other, to serve each other. I remember many, many years ago when I was celebrating Mass in a small community somewhere, an old lady came forward to read the Word of God. And she was reading the Word of God at that age without being able to read properly. The eyesight wasn't clear, the words weren't clear, nothing was clear. And I looked around at the congregation. There were people who have done their double graduation, people who had got certificates for elocution, people who were young and energetic, and all of them were sitting down and with their heads down, listening to the word of God. A disservice of the services given to us, a mockery of the services given to us. It is better to return that gift back to the Lord than to mock the Lord by not using his gifts and his services for the well-being of the community. When we ask people to pray, no, not me, you say one prayer, oh, you say one prayer, oh, you say one prayer. Why can't you pray? Is it not a service to the community? The choir, the readers, the altar service, the ushers, the sacristan, so many services. In the Archdiocese of Mumbai, lay people, Eucharistic ministers, taking communion for people in their respective areas, for the sick, for the dying. People participating in small Christian communities. People participating in various services in the church. I have got no time, Father. I have to take my son for the music class. I have to take my son and daughter for the, for the swimming classes. We are very busy people. Maybe after I retire, I will come and serve the church. Congratulations. Congratulations. Who knows if you will live till the day you retire? Service is here and now, just now, here and now, in the present, in the living, here and now. Once again, the Word of God inviting us to look at our own personal lives and ask ourselves the question, God has given me two hands, two legs, a good mind, a good tongue, a good intelligence, a good body, a good spirit, what am I doing with the gifts that God has given me? Am I making them available for the service of the church, for the service of his body, for the service of his kingdom, or am I keeping them in the handkerchief? The next thing that we learn here today in the, from the writings of Paul is this. In Christ, in the Spirit, there are no distinctions. No distinctions of Greek and Jew. No distinctions of language, caste, creed, region. As we see happening in our local churches. Shameful to see priests and religious, bishops quarreling, fighting, arguing about language,
caste, creed, seeking for posts and positions, shameful. In Christ there is no Greek, there is no Jew, there is no anyone, only sons and daughters, brothers and sisters of Jesus, sons and daughters of the Most High. St. Paul in the letter to the Galatians very clearly indicates for us chapter 5 verses 16 onwards. Any one of us who are involved in party spirit, dissensions, disunity, we got to think twice. Which spirit is guiding us? Is the Holy Spirit guiding me or the evil spirit guiding me? The fruit of the spirit is unity. Peace, love, goodness, joy. The last thing that we have today from the writing of St. John. When the Spirit was given to the disciples, they experienced forgiveness of sins. They experienced the forgiveness of sins. And they were given the authority to forgive the sins of people. This was one of the very core mission of Jesus. If we turn back the pages of the gospel, we see, I have come for the sinners, not for the righteous. I am inviting the sinners to repentance. And therefore, it's really good news for every one of us. Because with the coming of the Spirit, every one of us has an opportunity to place our sinful selves at the feet of the Lord to receive His mercy, His compassion, His forgiveness. As a priest, one of the most beautiful sacraments that I experience in my personal life is the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession. People who come there broken, people who come there heavy burdened, people who come there with all kinds of baggages of life and go back with a smile on their face, with a light heart, knowing fully well that Christ has forgiven them in his mercy and compassion. One of the most beautiful sacraments we have in the Catholic Church, the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession. Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the Feast of the Pentecost today, it's not merely about singing wonderful hymns. It's not simply about decorating our altars. It's not simply about having a wonderful meal and saying happy feast, happy feast. It's about self-reflection. It's about challenging myself to be a spirit-filled person living a spirit-filled life. That is the invitation for each and every one of us to be involved in the mission and the ministry of Jesus. As the words of our Lord said, As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. For what? To continue the mission and the ministry that I am entrusting to you. And therefore, brothers and sisters, this feast imposes upon us a great responsibility to place all our energies, all our strength, everything that I am, everything I hope to be at the service of the Lord and his kingdom. There is no exception whether I am a priest, I am a religious or I am a lay person. What we are saying is applicable to every one of us. Every one of us has a responsibility to participate and to promote the message and the mission of Jesus. 
We ask the Lord for his grace that his spirit may be re-enkindled within us today. That his spirit may be refreshed within us today. Making us spirit-filled people living a spirit-filled life. Amen.